Howdy folks, my name is Stally111 here and today I'm going to be showing you guys some gameplay. It's uh, James Lopez, a who's a producer at Gearbox, and uh, Joel Elshler from 2K Australia. They're both showing off some Borderlands pre-sequel gameplay to off to us. Hopefully you enjoy. You can see the full uncut version in the description below. Are you happy for Borderlands pre-sequel? Let me know in the comments. I am. And I'll be covering news on this game closer to the release date, so keep an eye out on my channel. And I really hope you enjoy this gameplay. I know I did. And uh, make sure to watch this and also the full version if you're really hyped for it in the description below. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, you enjoy. Peace off. Hey everyone, uh, my name is James. I'm a producer with Gearbox Software. Uh, hey, my name's Joel. I'm from 2K Australia. Um, in case people haven't seen the news lately, uh, 2K Australia and Gearbox Software are collaborating on an all new Borderlands title called Borderlands The Pre-Sequel. Now this is a full new standalone Borderlands title which is coming to Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and Windows PC in the fall of this year. And uh, we're here to give a run through of the demo that we prepared for PAX East earlier this year. Um, so why don't we get stuck into it? Yeah, alright, so right now we're looking at Athena. Uh, who is one of the new playable characters. She's uh, a sort of a famous NPC from Borderlands 1 DLC, uh, the General Knox DLC. Uh, right now we're putting our, our skill points into the Phalanx Tree, which enhances her kinetic aspis, which is this energy shield that Athena has that allows her to absorb uh, attacks from, en from enemies and throw it back at them. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get looting. Over here we have uh, one of our new loot chests. We're going to go and open up and we're going to see what we've got inside. All right, looks like we have uh, one of our new cryo guns. Uh, cryo is a new ice elemental uh, that we've introduced in the pre-sequel. Uh, fires ice bullets that allow you to freeze enemies and shatter them. Uh, we also have uh, the laser gun, which is a new gun type. So uh, it has different kind of laser attacks. Each manufacturer has their own kind. Right now we're looking at the Mali-1 uh, laser gun, and we might run into a couple of different types later on that we can show off. Uh, this is the Oz kit. This is an O2 kit. Uh, you need O2 because you're on the moon surface of uh, pa uh, Pandora's moon surface, which is Elpis. And Elpis is just like uh, Earth's moon in the sense that there's a very thin atmosphere, very low gravity. So you need oxygen, uh, but there's not really much on the surface. Um, looking at our uh, other playable character, Wilhelm, you might have seen that there's a uh, sort of a shimmering bubble over his head. That's his oxygen uh, bubble. That allows him to breathe on the surface. Um, the entire time that you're out there, you're losing oxygen, but don't worry. We've got plenty of stuff in place to make sure that you uh, that you always have opportunities to get more O2. Uh, case in point, we've just found one of the air geysers. You run on top of one of these things and it's going to fill up your oxygen. This is really important, not just because you need oxygen to breathe and live, but because we have some new features that we've added uh, that use oxygen. Uh, Joel, why don't you tell us some about that? Yeah, so when we were bringing in this oxygen system, we didn't want to bring in something that was annoying to players and the resource to manage. We want to bring in something that could give them cool new abilities. So you can see we're on the moon, you can already do low gravity jumps, but if we jump and then press jump again, um, you'll actually vent some oxygen and you'll do a boost. It'll allow you to go a little bit higher. You can also kind of push yourself forward. So why don't we uh, do a jump and then boost forward? Uh, and one of the other cool things you can do, it's, it's kind of my favorite thing to do in the game at the moment. It's, it's, it's technically it's called a slam, but I like to call it a butt stomp. If you jump up in the air, press jump again to boost, and then press crouch, you actually slam down to the ground and do an area of effect attack. It's a great way to manage crowds, to, to shove them back, because if you're in a low gravity area, you can push them back pretty far, which might be the edge that you need to either like, run away or focus on one guy before you deal with the rest of the crowd. All right, now we're going to go ahead and move into the next area. Uh, this is the comm facility. Um, there's a signal that's being jammed that you need to take care of so that you can get back up to Helios, which is the moonshot facility. Um, in the pre-sequel, uh, Jack is, uh, is in charge of, the, of Helios. He's not the Hyperion CEO yet that you know from Borderlands 2. Uh, right now he's just managing the station and you've been kicked off and you got to get back. Coming from that comms facility. Get in there, switch it off, because things are getting really interesting up here, kiddo, in a not fun kind of way. What's your bum in there? Reed Biller owns that place now, and I've heard he's a right nut job. Uh, you probably would have heard a bit of an Australian accent there. Uh, during the development of the game, it just so happened that uh, the moon kind of turned into Australia. 
All right, now where we are right now, there's this big gap. You wouldn't be able to make this jump normally in Borderlands, but with the oxygen system, we can kind of push out this jump. So let's go ahead and see if we can clear that gap. All right, Athena, you're up. Get plenty of O2 so you can make this jump. Uh, this is my favorite part of the demo because I like to push our demo drivers to boost as late as possible. Whoa. Oh, just like that. I like to see them sweat. So why don't we keep moving? You'll notice when we boost that oxygen meter is draining. Uh, and you can see in the horizon there, there's actually a beam shooting up to the sky and a HUD marker, and that's an oxygen generator. We can activate that in a sec, but this is Borderlands, so, you know, you always loot. And, yeah, l low gravity, no atmosphere. <laughs> but when you actually activate the oxygen generator, now there is atmosphere. So when we open up this other lootable, you'll see that it behaves differently. We want to make sure that, the, um, that this whole system felt organic, that it felt real, that it didn't just feel like it was tacked on. Um, this comes in really uh, important because with things like incendiary, uh, if you set someone on fire instead of a building with atmosphere, uh, they'll burn. But if you set them on fire in an area with no atmosphere, they won't. So you kind of have to make some, uh, you have some interesting opportunities. But these guys up here, I'm sure they're up to no good. So let's throw some grenades at them. So in low gravity, uh, you get blown up by a grenade, you go flying into orbit. Very awesome. Now you'll see these guys who are outside of the oxygen dome, uh, they're wearing the same bubble that you are, and if you manage to get a headshot like that, they'll actually start venting oxygen and become vulnerable. And uh, this really brings tactics into play for the player. So you, you can come into a space, and if you have a really kick-ass uh, incendiary weapon, you can choose to turn on the oxygen, or you can try and uh, take out their bubbles that way. But why don't we take a, take a chance to have a look at our, uh, our co-op buddy, Wilhelm. So people probably remember Wilhelm from Borderlands 2. He was the big robot that you fought right at the beginning, the first big boss. In this game, he starts out just as a man because this is his origin story as well as many other characters. And the really cool thing is, as you're building out his skill tree, not only do you gain new abilities, but you actually visually change him as well. You get robotic arms, robotic legs, shoulder-mounted rocket turrets. You're essentially building out his skill tree to tell the story of how he became the boss you fought in Borderlands 2, which we've had a lot of fun making. But I think uh, it's probably time to show off our first new action skill for Borderlands the Sequel. What do you think, James? Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. We're coming up on the barrier here for the uh, for the comp facility. This is being run by the Scavs, which are the scavengers. They're essentially moon bandits. They're not going to let us in without a fight. Uh, they're even bringing out some heavy hitters, some turrets, but luckily we've got our, our Aspis to uh, help us with that. Let's try to absorb as much damage as we can and throw it back at them. So you can see that the uh, shield is slowly spinning up. Uh, as it takes more and more damage, it's going to spin faster and faster. Um, you can kind of see it around the, the outer edge, uh, which means that we're just about ready to throw that back. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take care of this other laser and then get inside. Now, because we never get tired of blowing people off the side of the moon, let's throw some more grenades. We like to do these demos live. But because this is a, a co-op game, we can always rely on our buddies. That's right. Always better to play with friends. All right, now let's go ahead and show off the uh, the cryo gun. We showed a little bit earlier, but didn't really get to see it in action. Let's go ahead and free some enemies. So we've actually built this uh, procedural system so you can freeze any enemy like that. And once you get their health down to a certain threshold, you can shatter them. It's not an instant win button because you do need to get their health down low, but when you manage to do it, it's really satisfying. And it's different every single time. Now we're going to go ahead and divide and conquer so we can wipe out these scabs a little bit faster. Um, and then we're going to try to meet back up in a little bit. Athena, freeze this guy and try to, try to stomp him. Athena had a good tactic there. If you manage to get really high, your butt stuff will actually do more damage. So if you free someone, you can butt stuff down and shatter them from above. 
Now, you can, you can do more than just freezing them uh, while they're on the ground. We've got some jet fighter, uh, some sort of jet pack enemies. Let's try to freeze them while they're in the air. So if, if we do manage to freeze one of these guys in the air and they fall down a railing, they'll actually split in half. It's one of these uh, kind of random events that I love to see in the game. It, we, the uh, to the right here, uh, you'll see one of the new rideable vehicles in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, the Stingray. Uh, we're not going to need in this mission, so we're going to keep moving forward. But keep an eye out because we might have something more about that um, in some later news. Alright, looks like I found another loot chest. Let's pop this open and see what we have. Let's see if we have a, a new Oz kit over to the right here. So what does this Oz kit do? Let's see. So it looks like it uh, increases your oxygen meter. Um, it allows you to create an oxygen bubble, which comes in really handy when doing a slam. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that to Wilhelm and uh, see if we, can, if we can do some damage with it. So the Eye of Helios is uh, charging up now, and it's actually firing into the surface of the moon, which is probably not such a good thing when you see uh, bits of the ground kind of floating above you like that. Probably a good reason for us to get back up to that space station as soon as possible. Alright, so we've got a group of enemies coming up, uh, and so we're going to use our buddy Wilhelm to help us charge up our shield so we can get it going, because you can use friendly fire uh, to charge up Athena's shield. Let's try and take out all those guys at once. Nice. Awesome. Alright, well, um, yep, butt stomp time. And you see that bubble, uh, you can run inside that to, to recharge your oxygen. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you can also use the oxygen to set enemies on fire when you're out in this sort of area. Uh, so maybe we get a chance to use that, maybe we don't. Yeah, it is, it is a really good combo if you get that oxygen bubble with the fire to burn enemies, but I really love getting the cryo one as well, so if you jump down from high enough, butt stomp and shatter and freeze a guy all in one go. Why don't we try and get some more butt stomps happening? I never get tired of it. Uh, so we've, we've got some little scabs and a little outlaw here. Uh, this is a really good opportunity to try and charge that shield right up. So absorb some more damage. It's fully spinning now. So just move back a little bit, Athena, and fire it off. Oh, awesome. Nice. Now there's a lot more resistance in this area than we than we planned. We might need a little more help on this one. Who who could help us out possibly? Uh-oh. All right, we really need some, down. Now. need some help And we have hey! playable Claptrap. For the first time ever in a Borderlands game, you get to play as Claptrap. And he's going to help us out a little bit in this fight. Thanks, buddy. All right, let's fight these guys out. And the other playable character in Borderlands the sequel is Nisha the Lawbringer, who fans of the franchise will also remember. We'll be talking about her at a later date. Beautiful frozen badass outlaw. So yeah, we should probably head in here and try and disable that signal so we can get up to the space station. Alright, you better get him, Athena. 
Uh, getting close. Uh, did we mention low gravity already? 